Hi guys, it's Emma Viglung with TYT Politics. So today, President Trump's nominee for Health and Human Services Secretary, uh, a role vacated by high-flying Tom Price, sorry, that was so horrible, um, will have his confirmation hearing held by the Senate Finance Committee. Uh, his name is Alex Azar. Uh, he is a former executive for Eli Lilly and Company, which is a multinational pharmaceutical maker, a huge one. Uh, the GOP's relationship with Eli Lilly is well documented. Uh, in 2016, Eli Lilly spent over $2.3 million on political campaigns uh, and donated $413,000 directly to the Rep Republicans and $193,000 to Democrats. That was just in 2016. And in 2016, they donated to just one presidential campaign, Scott Walker. So that might give you an indication of the goals of this company. Our very own TYT Investigates found that Republicans were even citing Eli Lilly executives in their tax bill press releases. Uh, in late 2017, Paul Ryan released a press release citing the allegedly nonpartisan nonprofit tax foundation, which concluded that, quote, that the House Republican tax bill unveiled last week will create the equivalent of about 975,000 full-time jobs. The Tax Foundation's board includes uh, executives from PepsiCo, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and Microsoft, as well as former Republican Re uh, Representative Bill Archer and Douglas Holtz Eakin, former economic advisor to President George W. Bush and the presidential campaign of Senator John McCain. The chairman of the Tax Foundation is David P. Lewis, vice president for global taxes and chief tax executive for Eli Lilly and Company. Lewis, Eli Lilly CEO David Ricks and the company itself have been vocal proponents of the GOP tax bill. Ricks and other industry CEOs met with President Donald Trump on January 31st, 2017 to discuss a range of issues including the corporate tax rate. Only problem? Not the only problem. But uh, Eli Lilly doesn't have a great track record uh, uh, of being exactly honest about these matters. Uh, TYT investigates rights. Eli Lilly's record on taxes and jobs came under scrutiny in 2011 as a part of a Senate report. The report surveyed big companies about the impact of a temporary tax holiday on profits that had been kept overseas where they were exempt from U.S. taxes. The report said, Eli Lilly repatriated most of its qualifying dividends from a holding company which was located in Switzerland and employed 86 employees among itself and 12 subsidiaries. The remaining portion of its qualifying dividends were repatriated from an investment holding company which had no employees and which was located in the British Virgin Islands. Interesting. So where does Alex Azar fit into all of this? Well, Azar was the former president of Eli Lilly's U.S. operations, and as Politico reported yesterday, he oversaw practices like this. When Donald Trump's nominee for HHS secretary was a top executive at Eli Lilly, the patent on its blockbuster Cialis was soon to expire. So Lilly tested it on kids. <laughs> the drug maker believed the erectile dysfunction drug might help a rare and deadly muscle wasting disease that afflicts boys. The drug didn't work, but under a law that promotes pediatric research, Lilly was able to extend the Cialis patent anyway for six months. And that's worth a lot when a medication brings in over $2 billion a year. This guy oversaw testing boner pills on kids. <laughs> and frankly, that's not because it was some dire situation where men needed their boner pills or lives would be lost. No, it was because, as Politico reports, that medication, Cialis, yeah, Cialis, yeah, I know, the, the one where the older couple is holding hands in that bathtub, um, that brings in around $2 billion a year and it was under the guise of helping children. So this is what this guy oversaw. This isn't the only unethical thing that Lilly has done, as I mentioned before, obviously. Lilly is one of three drug companies targeted by a class action lawsuit that accuses the company, then under Azar's watch, of exploiting the drug pricing system to ensure higher profit for insulin and has been fined in Mexico for colluding on the pricing of the drug. Drain the swamp, right? This is the exact definition of the swamp. The revolving door of corporate executives who aren't in this for public service, of course, but for personal profit. US government, yay. Azar has to let his former employer slide on more unethical practices. And after that, he's gonna get a great big lobbying check. 
Because that's the problem. This Cialis practice, at least, was legal. The restrictions on pharmaceutical manufacturers are extremely loose, uh, as evidenced by what happened here. And these restric restrictions weren't just loosened under Republicans, mind you. Obama and the Democrats deserve a ton of blame for being in bed with the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and, and you know we've seen that play itself out in many different iterations. Oh well, American democracy at its finest, just paying off uh, corporate executives with lobbying positions uh, after they do their public service.